Hi guys, welcome to a new video this week. This week I have something very exciting to share with you guys and it's this set of watercolors by Peerless Watercolors. So this is basically a very old company and they have kept their recipe pretty much the same since the start, which was in 1900, no, 1902. Uh, and they pretty much kept the recipe exactly the same. Uh, this booklet that I'm showing you was published that year and basically it tells you how to use each color, it has some information in the front. It was pretty much telling you how to and I thought that was very interesting and it was super cute just to see how someone expert in watercolor at that time was telling you how to use them so I thought it was really funny. Uh, they're very pigment you can tell here these are blues and one looks like copper the other one has purple reflection so they're very cool. In the back they show you how the color is supposed to look so I thought it was very cool. So basically this company was developed 1885 and I, I just think that's crazy. I'm not sure how it is with other brands they're probably very old as well but I just thought that this was very funny because it kept the very vintage look so they also sent me a bonus pack and here I'm just doing a little booklet for it uh, I, this is inspired by my friend Nadia Hausa she was also gifted this set and so she basically did a little booklet for it which was very helpful because I was just keeping dropping them and they don't really let you let you know the names of the colors individually they're like tell you Oh, they're stacked by this order. <laughs> I immediately dropped them all, so <laughs> immediately I lost all the names, so I really don't know the names of any color on the booklet. My bad. That was my bad. I also stuck some parchment paper in between each sheets of the big booklet because as soon as I wet the pigment page it would just go on on the other page and I didn't want to create that mess, so I just did this very quickly with some double-sided tape. It was it was pretty fun actually, it was just a relaxing project for me to do. It wasn't too bad. So now I'm just doing a few swatches and um, one thing that I noticed is that this set is very heavy on the yellows and oranges to a point that they kind of all look the same to me. There are a few differences of course, but I don't know, I just thought at least two oranges were pretty much the same. Pinks and the blues were very cool, I really like the pinks and the reds in this set. I thought they were some very fun colors. The greens are okay, uh, like I, like you probably know, I'm not a green person, so eh, there's two in the big set, I probably won't use them, <laughs> but it's not too bad. I really like the purples and it was just, I really liked swatching this, but the colors I liked the most came in the bonus pack. I really like the color there, of course it has more color variety there, there's like 40 I think, but again lots of yellows and oranges but I don't know, I, I really like them and they're very transparent, very vibrant and I really really enjoy them they kind of reminded me of the Viviva color sheets but I will then show you how, how they are a bit different but visually they do remind me of that and that's what pretty much I thought they were I thought they were very similar to the Viviva color sheets they even are a different color in the sheet so but they are different, they are very different and I'm super happy that they are different because I always found the Viviva a bit difficult to work with because they lifted so easily and it was impossible to layer with them in a way that was at least clean so I was very excited about that I'm just doing a little test here to see if they lifted and if I could layer them. Uh, once they're there, they're pretty much there. You cannot 
lift them as much so in that they're pretty much the opposite they will stay in the paper uh, but I'm not sure if it's because of this paper because this is 100% cotton and I don't know if that might soak the watercolor better you could lift a little bit of the color but not create a like super clean streak in what I've seen in some cases so you can kind of lift it but not too too much one thing uh, the PR let me know that I was very happy to hear about is that they changed recently the name Flush Tint to Peach Ripe. Um, they told me that, of course, to just be more modern, that's the only thing that they changed because, I mean, a hundred years back, unfortunately the times were another. <laughs> so their now Flush Tint is called Peach Ripe, which was very sweet of them to change it and to let me know. So that's a plus in my book that they care enough. So here I have been kind of into negative painting and I really wanted to try some again. In the page you are you can see that I did a few tests before. This one was after me seeing a few tutorials because the first ones I went just went in and I don't know, they don't look as cool. <laughs> this one was pretty fun because I was just choosing random colors and just waiting for them to dry. And yeah, they're super vibrant. I am very pleased with them and they're very fun. The booklet makes it easier to work with and the swatches I did in the bottom are also very helpful. I should also do the same for the big booklet, I just forgot and because the paper is thinner I'm not sure if it will take but I'll try. Negative painting is pretty cool, um, I really like it but I'm not great at it yet but I just I think it looks so so cool, I really want to just do more and just get super better at it because I think if you, especially if you use it in backgrounds it can give a very it can give you a very like depth feeling it can just give you a sense of <laughs> something I can't talk today guys it's too early I basically edit my videos in the weekend in the mornings because that's when my boyfriend's not in the computer um, because he's sleeping and he works in the computer so basically during the week he's working and basically my computer is shite so I just use his because if I used mine I would it's actually quicker to edit his videos only on the weekend morning using his computer than to actually using my computer if I had the whole week that's how bad it is but basically yeah so most of the times when I'm doing the voiceover I'm still asleep which is the case today but yeah I basically went and just did a very deep burgundy color and this mix, these colors mix pretty well, that's very cool. I don't have the pigment informations from each, so I don't know if there are multiple pigments, single pigments, I'm not sure, I don't have a lot of information how they're made. In the Pugolet it does not express how they're exactly made, uh, they only mention, for example, the cares that they also have liquid colors, they still do have liquid colors and I believe they're coming up with some shimmers which seems a lot of fun they mention they also teach you which kind of brushes to use it was like a little how-to watercolor in the beginning which I thought it was very funny I really liked it it was very fun just reading through it even though it was a hundred years ago the writing is not too complicated it's easy to understand so I really like how the vintage look it is I really like how they came with the with that old-timey ripe paper I just I appreciate the aesthetic of this set. The edges are not super clean, but that's my fault. I did not wait enough time because I was impatient. But I think if I try more, I would be able to just get cleaner edges, but that was my bad. Uh, but the color layered re really well. So now to actually use it in like a normal painting for me, I'm still striking on inspiration. Yes, still. It's been a bad couple of months. So I just pretty much did a, a random doodle. It was just the first thing that came to my mind. 
and yeah I'm just using an old plate that I broke and it's not even a palette hey you use what you got I have a few personal porcelain palettes but they're pretty small and I don't know they're okay for each individual color but if I have to mix a bunch of colors I just prefer to use this or just a plate that I also have so right off the bat I can tell I can layer this like proper watercolor I can pretty much layer them I could tell already when I as soon as I did the skin I was like hmm this is gonna be different I can use this as normal watercolor I don't have to jump around the colors or just worry they're gonna lift up of anywhere because you probably remember when I did my Viva color sheets I was telling you they lift super easily you cannot do layering with that no way you can do a few layers if you mean like super dry brush and you can do a line art but with this I could do proper layering I went all out on the hair because it's basically what the piece is it's basically a face and arms with a bunch of hair it's not a super original drawing but hey I had fun and as soon as I realized I could do layering oh boy I could not be stopped it was just all out I honestly cannot tell you which colors I used because I was just going back and forth from the bonus pack palette from the normal palette and I was just skipping trying to use colors from both and not really paying attention what the colors I was using I do know I used a lot of the crimson what is it called the royal crimson I used that a heck of a ton and the Japan Japonica scarlet it was very fun just to give you a little introduction of what each page says about the color I'm going to read you the royal crimson one because it's a color I used a lot so <clears throat> this color is very useful in flower tinting coloring of maps and charts for interior work and figure pieces with Gnarium pink it produces a rich carmine with sky blue a warm purple and in diluted form cardinal claret and like shades this color very nearly approaches the royal purple of old and it is now the acknowledged insignia of royalty so basically it just gives you a bit of description of each color and and kind of a suggestion of what colors to use it with so basically if you mix it with this it creates this color of course it might have some irregularities because of course 100 years old but just take that with a grain of salt and i i didn't really follow anything because even though i should know color theory i don't really use it and i just go with it so <laughs> that's my bad i actually want to take a skillshare class about color theory and just actually learn it some of you uh, sometimes ask me how do you pick colors uh, your color schemes are so fun and i'm like yeah i totally have a reasoning behind it and it's not just me picking random colors that i think it look good yeah that's totally it i totally have a reasoning yeah uh -huh. so i'm sorry to disappoint but it's basically what i like i zero reasoning between there i cannot say Oh, I went to the color wheel and I chose this trio because it looks cool. No. <laughs> Something that I noticed that happened was that when I was working on one of the sheets, I kind of overworked it and I kind of got a little bit of the paper fibers on the painting. Just, just a little note and for you to be careful if you ever work with these, to just don't overwork the sheets <laughs> because you might end up with just paper all over the place. But it wasn't too too bad as soon as it dried i just brushed it off they are paper after all it's not like a plastic palette so yeah basically here i'm just using a little bit of negative painting just because i don't know it was fun it was just it was just for fun so this is the end of the video thank you so so much for being here i hope you enjoyed the video and if you want to check out perilous you can find them on instagram and i'll try and find their website and put it on below as always, as soon as I talk about something, I'll leave it down in the description. Please check out my Instagram, the, this piece will be there along with many others that I've done. And if you want to check out my Skillshare classes, I have two months free for you in the link below as well. And yeah, I upload every Monday and we just try and have a good time here. Thank you so, so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!